So, our last speaker today is Fred Overhand, uh, and uh, he is presenting a very unique uh, uh, perspective on TensorFlow uh, because he is teaching it on a daily basis in an EPFL extension school. And I have to say, I've been on one of his courses uh, last year, and it was one of the best courses I had on uh, deep learning. And just one day of very intensive course cost him one month of preparation, if I remember correctly. So Fred, he uh, finished his computer science at EPFL and worked at the same time in Edge Laboratories. Mm -hmm. uh, then he moved immediately almost to EPFL Extension School when he created data science applications and machine learning course, one of the most popular courses on this platform, which now, I don't know, several hundred people is taking. And something what I find quite interesting, because I, I'm following as many of you on these open courses on internet, um, but he is really uh, speaking with uh, his students. So whenever the user have a problem, he is reporting it to Fred, so he can also talk what are the common problems, what are the unique problems, and what are the common pluses and minuses of TensorFlow. And so, please. So thanks, Pavel, for the great introduction. So I started this, um let's say, um, adventure with the EPFL Extension School in 2016 as a um, course instructor and course developer. Um, so the challenge was to bring professionals from very different backgrounds. I guess this is what we have also this evening. And to acquire those ML skills and to be able to use those ML and deep learning tools in their field of expertise. So the challenge was really about the wide audience, um, not necessarily uh, engineering, not necessarily, um, let's say, technical and scientific. Um, so, and I wanted to discuss um, and to share with you my, um, ex my knowledge uh, about teaching TensorFlow and the feedback that I got from people learning it. Um, so we launched um, this Applied Data Science Machine Learning program in 2017. Um, yeah. Okay, so first I want to show you um, a few use cases. So the course is, is, is quite guided. You have four courses and uh, at the end there, was a, there is a capstone project where people can come with their own ideas and, um, and uh, well, uh, demonstrate that they have acquired the tools from the course. So I want to show you a, a bit what people um, did and also what are the tools that they used for those projects. And finally, with a, with a summary and some conclusion about teaching and learning TensorFlow. So one thing that strikes me about um, teaching TensorFlow and all the projects that we got from our learners is the diversity in terms of different domains, but also different data sets and types of data. And to give you a, a few examples, um, there was one called Acoustic Environment Detection. Um, the idea is simple. You take five second clips, uh, audio clips, and you have to recognize whether it's, uh, it was recorded in, in the street of a city or in a quiet meeting room or in, in the hall of a train station and, and so on. So this, is, this was sound, um, based on sound. But also classifying history maps. Um, we have an example of, this is a Siegfried map. It's um, Swiss maps developed between 1870 and 1922 um, with a few categories that are very precise. Uh, you have forests, you have wetlands, you have um, fields, lakes, roads, train, tra train tracks. And the idea was to build um, a machine learning tool to automatically label those maps and digitize them be able to, to do some higher level analytics based on that. We also had some medical applications with uh, breast cancer detection, some text application with recognizing ancient inscriptions and defining where they were written and when also. Um, so many different domains. We also have one with hail forecasting and cloud recognition, which, uh, which was fun, I think, and another one with exoplanet detection and clustering. So what strikes me is that in the course, I, I didn't teach um, any of, the, of this application. I didn't teach how to process sound, didn't teach how to, uh, to do image segmentation. So learners, they were able to, um, to, 
take the, the, the fundamentals from the course and apply them in different domains. And I think this is one of the strengths of deep learning, is really you have one tool to solve that uh, has um, a, a huge potential to solve different uh, um, uh, applications. Also, from an engineering perspective, I think all, the, all those systems are quite complex. And given the fact that the learners are not necessarily from a developer, um, say professionally, they are not developers, I think this was um, possible because of the great and many libraries based on TensorFlow. So just to mention a few, a few, a few of them, it's TensorFlow Object Detection API, uh, PoseNet also, to, to do some, some pose estimation. So based on, for instance, the, the webcam feed, you can detect um, um, different skeleton um, coordinates and do some higher level tasks. Also TensorFlow UNet, which is shown here, which is for image uh, segmentation. So based on only a few labeled, training labeled images that the learner automat uh, manually did on a, a simple image, um, image software, was able to, to do image um, segmentation on his task, uh, which was the, the Siegfried maps. So from the perspective of a learner, there were uh, uh, several tools that came up frequently in, the, in, in those projects. One of them that was discussed by Elizabeth um, this evening is um, TensorFlow Hub. Uh, so TensorFlow Hub as a way to process complex data, for instance, text, for instance, image, uh, we had also ob object detection uh, presented this evening. I think this is a, a very easy way if when, when, when you start and you don't necessarily know how to wire the network and wh what are the rules, just download the, those modules and well, use them on, on your data. Also one question that came uh, frequently in, the, in this course, so okay, we learn all these concepts and we apply everything in our laptop, but how can we transfer what we learn in, in, in practice in the company. So if I have a deep learning model, how can I deploy it? And I think TensorFlow handles well this, this part. And it's easy to move uh, between, uh, from prototyping to production with, for instance, a safe model and TensorFlow serving. Some, one feedback that also came frequently in our discussion with the learners was the fact that there are so many resources available um, online to learn about TensorFlow um, and many guides. And they all use different uh, levels, let's say abstraction levels. So for instance, you, you, one use Keras, one use tf.keras, the other used uh, the more low level um, graph and sessions. So, and really, it's, it's really good because we can benefit from all these different um, abstraction levels. Also, the fact that not all learners taking the course came from a Python background. So they also appreciate the fact that you have now TensorFlow Swift, TensorFlow JS was released 1.0, C++, and also things like many um, devices supported like TensorFlow JS for the web, but also mobile for, with TensorFlow Lite. So overall, my, conclu my conclusion and my feedback um, about using teaching TensorFlow and the feedback th that I got from the learners was very positive. Um, first, because you have so many libraries and it's easy to use them, so many tools, and, and the community that comes with it. Also, it covers the entire pipeline. So it's really more about an ecosystem, um, easily to, to move from prototyping to production. And also you have many different APIs many different languages, and many devices supported, web, mobile. And I think that this also brings uh, many learning, learning opportunities for people. OK, thanks. platform, educational platform, so why did you choose example, TensorFlow and do you also teach other platforms, other approaches? Learn. So we, we, we do a few, a few workshops uh, and test different technologies. I think now uh, more and more you have uh, many similarities between them, uh, in particular with eager mode now deployed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next question. We have five minutes and then we go to upper.
So thank you very much to everyone.